I think uh, societies are, are likely to respond to peak oil in basically one of four ways. The first one I call last one standing, and that's, I think, the default mode. That's, that's the path we're on right now, which is basically fighting over what's left. As oil becomes more scarce, standard human response will be to, uh, to contest over the remaining supplies. And of course, that leads nowhere. Nobody will win the, the last oil war because we'll, we'll destroy the very thing we're fighting over in the process of fighting over it. Um, so the, the, the second path, which uh, is, is a pretty commonsensical one, is, is what I call power down. It's, it's uh, using less. It's scaling back society so that our per capita consumption of non-renewable resources is, uh, is diminished substantially so that gradually we, we reduce the scale of the human project until we're within the long-term carrying capacity of the planet for human beings because we're way outside that right now. We're, we're in overshoot territory in ecological terms. Uh, so if, if, we're, if we're going to survive much longer and do it in a, a coordinated cooperative way, we're going to have to scale down considerably. So. Uh, that's a tough sell, though, because uh, we're in an industrial growth economy and we have advertising that's convinced us all that we deserve to have more and it's out there for us to have. So we're, we have to change those cultural messages. Uh, a, a successful power down is not going to happen unless we really change our whole cultural story and uh, engage in mass consciousness shift. So that's a big, uh, big process. Uh, I think uh, there's a, a strong tendency, therefore, to take a third path, which is the path of delusion and denial. Uh, well, you know, if, if we're going to run out of oil, well, we'll just substitute something else. We'll all run our cars on vegetable oil, or, or we'll, we'll dig a bunch of coal out of the ground and turn that into substitute uh, synthetic uh, fuel for our cars, or, or whatever, methane hydrates, or, you know, there are all kinds of things we could do. Now, in fact, if you start examining all of those closely, none of them can actually make up for what we're doing with oil right now. Um, it, and even if some of them theoretically could, eventually, if we put enough uh, investment into them and so on, it would take time. And it would take truly, literally trillions of dollars of investment to build up the, the scale of the, of the flow of these alternative fuels and energy sources it's, it's not going to happen. But uh, the, the danger is that we would convince ourselves that, sure, that's, that's the, the way it will happen until we get to the point where we've wasted all the time that we might have used in, in preparation and transition so that we have no choice but to take path number one, last one standing, just fight over what's left. Again, I think that's a, a likely path. It's an easy path especially if you're a politician or a policymaker, because you don't actually have to do anything. All you have to do is listen to the, the people around you who are saying, don't worry, there's always something else, the market will take care of it, whatever. The fourth path is, you know, if, uh, if power down doesn't work or it's not even seriously tried, and if we do go the path of, of last one standing and delusion and denial, what will happen? Well, what will happen most likely is the collapse of industrial civilization. And if that is the likely outcome, then we should be putting some effort into building lifeboats. So this fourth path is what I call lifeboat building. And it means creating communities of, of support and communities of uh, service. So that they're, they're not just uh, survivalist communities, but they're, they're communities that are preserving knowledge uh, information, skills, seeds, and then teaching skills to people outside the community so that, uh, so that that knowledge is being uh, disseminated, preserved, spread, uh, and that way the outside community uh, will, will, will not break down the doors of these smaller uh, preservationist communities to get what they have, but will instead support them because these, these are the most important people in our community because they have the skills, they have the knowledge that can help us to survive too. And if, if we do that, if we go down that road, I think uh, maybe in, in a few generations we could see uh, a very different world, a uh, much more locally organized world um, with people living in a much slower, 
pace and smaller scale, but perhaps very, very survivably and very happily. America's um, housing infrastructure is extremely vulnerable to the problem of peak oil. Not only have we created a settlement pattern, namely suburbia, that's entirely dependent on the automobile, but also we've built uh, millions of houses that have to be heated with fossil fuels, mostly natural gas, also fuel oil in, in the Northeast. Uh, and natural gas is going to be in just a short supply, perhaps even shorter supply than oil in the years ahead in, in North America. Uh, we're approaching a, a real natural gas crisis. So how are we going to heat all of these houses? You know, we're, uh, most of us are living in places that get really cold in the winter. I mean, you really can freeze to death in places like Iowa and Minnesota and upper New York State. So we're going to have to figure out an alternative to the standard American house and do it really quickly. Uh, we're going to have to retrofit an awful lot of houses, but mainly we just have to stop building these things and, and come up with a completely different solution for how human beings should live.